Hello everyone, welcome on board to the Wings of Science, aptly named because today we are going to be doing a deep dive into Helldivers 2 Lift 850 Jump Pack. The Jump Pack is a backpack type stratagem and is the only stratagem currently out there that can enhance your Helldivers movement. And as a self-diagnosed movement junkie, you'll always find me with light armor using the stamina regen booster and running the Jump Pack. And after many, many missions of using it and hours of hours of labbing the jump pack, I've compiled a list of some basic know-hows, case situations, as well as some general tips and gameplay that I'd like to share with you all. First, let's get into some real basic stuff about the jump pack, which is before you can use the jump pack, it needs to have a charge. And the charge is indicated by a yellow bar on the back of the jump pack, as well as a yellow line on the side. Once you have a charge, you can hold whatever key or button you use to vault. Uh, for me, I'm on PC and that will be the space bar. When using it, you will be sent towards the air and when you return back towards the ground, the jump pack will slightly activate again to prevent fall damage. The second activation is automatically triggered and cannot be manually triggered. And for you to use the jump pack again, it will need to have another charge before you can activate it. A quick note about charges here. When you call in the jump pack, it will always drop in fully charged and will take about 20 seconds to recharge. The jump pack will begin recharging at the time that it is used, meaning as you get off the ground. So it doesn't just start when you land, it's the moment you start propelling in the air. As the jump pack charges, it will play a quiet whirring sound. And the bar on the back of the pack, now red to show that it's not ready, will slowly raise indicating that it's booting up another charge. If you try to use it prior to a full charge, it will make a, some sort of I'm not ready yet sound. And once it is fully charged, the red bar will now become yellow and there will be an audible cue to let you know that it is ready to be used. Now let's talk about the real meat of the jump pack, which is how do you maximize your jumps? In other words, what affects your jump pack distance and height? So let's start with distance. Two things will determine your distance with a jump pack, your initial speed and your stamina. While I was testing the jump pack, using it while sprinting and using it while walking both return different distances. If you are moving while crouching and use the jump pack while you're crouching, you will move, you will fly a shorter distance than if you were walking. If you were to prone while using the jump pack, you will stand up and be in a walking state before the jump pack activates. So treat it the same as if you're walking, meaning the only real differences would be if you were either running, walking or crouching. So to sum up a couple hours of testing, the faster you are when you use the jump pack, the farther you will go. Now as to what affects your speed, stamina is a big factor here. Surprisingly, when you activate the jump pack, it will also require stamina to use. If you were to use the jump pack while you have stamina, you were able to travel the full distance allowed by your speed. If you were to jump pack without stamina, you will lose several meters of distance. Running and using it without stamina will still get you farther than walking without stamina. So if you still want to get as far as you can, you should still run. Also, when you activate the jump pack, it doesn't need all of the stamina that it normally takes. It just wants to know if you have any stamina present, meaning even if you had a sliver of stamina or even one point of stamina, you will still go the full distance. So since stamina and running affects your speed, the other part of that is now your armor. Because if you have heavy armor, you move slower. And because you move slower, you don't go as far when you activate your jump pack. And in terms of distances, you only go a slightly less distance if you're having heavy armor. I found that full sprint, light armor, running the jetpack takes you maybe 23, 24 meters. And using heavy armor will maybe be about 21, 20 or so. I would say it's marginally small. I wouldn't say it's nothing notable. It's just something that exists. Aside from sprinting, of course, there will also be differences when you're walking and when you're crouching and if you have stamina or not. But yeah, just a quick recap on distance. The two main things you want to remember is do I have stamina and how fast am I going? Because those two will affect how far that you go. And height is a little bit different. And in terms of the arc of, of which you travel when using the jump pack, I found it to be the same height whether you're running or sprinting. As for how high you go, I believe stamina is the main factor here and maybe whether or not you're crouching or standing. There are significant height distances whether you activate your jump with the stamina or without. I believe the height is the same whether or not you're standing or crouching. It looks like you are lower while crouching because your head's kind of tucked into your chest, but I think the actual height the jump pack gives you is the same. If you were to use a jump pack with stamina, I'd say it can go as far as five to maybe five and a half meters in the air. Meaning if you were to jump at something four meters in the air, you can easily clear it. If you were to jump at something that's maybe five to a little below six meters, I think you can reach it because you still can vault at the ledge. If you're not sure whether or not you can make your jump, I highly recommend using your ping. If you're not sure how far something is from you, you can use your ping because the ping has some sort of distance feature will let you know how far something is. So you can use that to gauge out whether or not you can make that jump. Now let's explore some of the different interactions with your weapons, utility, and your stratagems. 
If you're aiming in first person and use the jump pack, you will be taking out and into third person, but you can resume aiming as you land. While in the air though, you can still fire your weapon, but you can only fire it from the hip, so you're restricted there. Also, while jumping, you are able to reload your weapon, which is a good thing to do as a tactic as you're fleeing enemies, and if you also have no or little ammo, so you can turn around as you land and quickly, you know, just resume fighting. As for your grenades and utility, it kind of follows the same trend. You will be able to aim it precisely as you're in the air, but you can still throw it. The same goes for stratagems. Um, you can jump pack and have your input UI out, enter the input, and then throw it. You cannot aim it precisely, but can still throw it in the direction that you want it to go. However, there is a video online by someone um, named Standard Ace and they kind of showed a cool trick where if you were to hold both your aim and fire button as you jump pack, you can aim precisely with either your grenade or stratagem to get a lot more precision throws. As far as I know, there hasn't been any other similar trick for aiming with weapons, but the grenades and the stratagem tip is really cool by itself. As for stratagems, there's a bit to go through here. With the machine gun and heavy machine gun, these are weapons that when you reload, you're kind of forced to sit there, crouch, and do the animation. But if you do it while you're jump packing, you can still reload as you're traveling through the air. When you do reload with these weapons in the air, your height gets somewhat adjusted and you don't go as far as you would as if you were to not do this trick. When it comes to weapons that require charging, such as the quasar cannon or arc thrower, it's it's a good tactic to jump pack and then charge the weapon so that when you land it is now fully ready to go so this is good for if you're repositioning or trying to get away from the enemy but still be preparing to fight them also not a big thing here but you can also board your patriot the exosuit mid jump so that's as close as to titanfall as we're going to get here lastly when you're hip firing your weapon mid air the direction in which you shoot is kind of depending on the weight being held meaning if you were to use over the shoulder type weapons such as the eat or the quasar cannon it will be kind of down towards to the left if you were to shoot guns that you hold at your hip think of like most of your primaries and the machine guns you will be shooting sort of to the left and towards the air so if you're hoping for some anti-material rifle mid-air 360s you're gonna have to get pretty creative with this one now as for gameplay i find that depending on the faction the gameplay uses differs quite a bit for the automatons, I think the jump pack excels at stealth-like approaches because you're able to just ignore those tall walls and get straight to the terminal it makes it for a very objective focused stratagem for combat scenarios, you're going to use it to either create some distance away from, you know, berserkers or hulks, or get into certain vantage points to shoot, to shoot at devastators. I like to take the anti-material rifle or the eruptor to be able to have significant impact from afar on bot planets. In bulk worlds, it depends on who you're fighting. I personally found it hard to find on planets where there were bile spewers, as their spit significantly shows, slows you and impacts your jump pack's effectiveness. And since your jump pack effectiveness is based on your speed, being slowed will not help you at all. If I was fighting the bile type bugs, I would take that automaton approach and get, you know, as far away as I can and just take pod shots at them. If it was just a standard set of warrior bugs and chargers, I would take a lot more in your face approach. I would like to take close quarters weapons such as a shotgun or a flamethrower and just jump in, jump out. Additionally, if this was like a blitz type mission, I would also like to take the grenade launcher and just kind of run around as fast as I can with light armor, just closing up holes and trying to finish as fast as I can. And lastly, both bugs and the bots can hit you mid-air and you don't want to be caught by them of any of course, but especially not by those like baby bile bugs because every hit slows you and that one just really sucks. Also, since the jump pack is really good in terms of adding a new way of repositioning yourself when you're, you know, trying to escape enemies but still focus on the objective, you can take them down a lower path or a lower level of terrain and then jump pack to a higher one because it takes some time for them to move up. I found it to be very useful if you're trying to get them away from a terminal and you just want to quickly complete the objective and then go. So that covers gameplay. Now here's some tips about the jump pack. Um, you cannot stim yourself while using the jump pack. You can stim before and then jump, but if you stim and then jump too quickly from each other, your jump pack will cancel your stim animation and you don't want to learn that the hard way. You cannot melee mid-air either, so I'm sorry to anyone who's expecting the dog fight the hunter or the bots with the with the jetpack of their own. While mid-air, you can also drop things, which which I didn't find any uses out of it at this moment. I just I guess you can maybe hot drop your samples over the extraction point and just keep on moving without you know wasting any time. You can also pick things up while mid-air, and I didn't find this to be very useful except for one niche condition. It's useful for objectives such as the CAF artillery while holding the shells you can't use your jetpack however if you were to line it up run and then jetpack and then pick it up you can still take it the full distance as if you were to not hold it but still you know carry it the, the whole way 
Also, the environment can also negatively affect your jump pack effectiveness. Planetary conditions such as the tremors or whether you're on an ice planet or a bug planet that has those, you know, plants or spores on the ground that if you touch, it slows you down. Just be mindful of those as again, your effectiveness with the jump pack depends on the speed at which you're going. Lastly, I want to say is to use your ping because pinging gives you how far something is from you. And again, rule of thumb is if it's four meters or uh, around four meters, you can easily clear that jump. If it's about five meters to five and a half, you can probably vault it. You don't really know just by eyeballing it. You kind of have a feeling, but to be more specific, to be more certain, just ping in, you can easily see. And if it's maybe six meters, uh, meaning that a jump pack could clear it, just look around for maybe a little rock that you can stand on and then do it. I feel like the jump pack is very useful this way because beyond just what it provides, it also makes you be more aware of the geography of the map and the topography of where everything is. Because there's really certain vantage points you, can, you may need to take a certain approach. And I think that experimentation that created in this makes this game a lot more enjoyable for me. Also, I don't feel like I mentioned it. I feel like I mentioned earlier, but just to be sure, while you're in the air with your jump pack and you throw your grenades and your stratagems, you can use that extra height to launch them even further just a quick tip i found it useful if you want to maybe take a fight from further away you don't want to draw aggro but still want to throw your orbitals or eagle strikes at the enemy you know clear the base and then move in overall i found the jump pack as a wonderful stratagem to use it can bail you out of so many sticky situations it can get you to a vantage point where you can also easily explore the map and assess the situation i would love to see more movement related strategies in the game and i feel that maneuverability in a third person game like this is a large component of how enjoyable the experience is so yeah uh, thanks for watching I'm curious to see what you all think about the jump pack and if there are any tips or tricks you have. So please comment and share them as I'm eager to learn all there is about this thing. If you like what you see, like what you heard, be sure to like and subscribe. I enjoy making Helldivers 2 content and have more ideas currently in the works, so stay tuned for those. Um, again, thanks for checking out my video and have a nice day. Democracy.